Hello everyone, it's this time of year again. Cinema 4D R18 has been announced and it's a release loaded with uh, great new features. Let's go through some of the highlights. One of the biggest ones and the one people will play for hours with is the new fracturing. I'm obviously not talking about the old fracture object that produces this kind of result. I'm talking about a Voronoi fracturing object that gives us something like this. And the great thing about this new object is that it works with all sorts of things inside Cinema. Let's take this cube for example. We can either work with the default point distribution, change the number of points, and in general adjust things the way we please. But we can also add objects, points and splines, and mix and match them to get the result we want. We can enable and disable these sources and create all sorts of cool results. We can also add shaders or even particles. The sky's the limit. Expect to lose lots of hours while playing with this new feature. Here's one example I've been playing with. The setup is really simple. I've just animated some colliders, hitting the fractured text, and that's about it. It's that easy. Now on to some more great additions. MoGraph. We have a bunch of cool new stuff here. The first one is the re-effector. What it does is really simple. It disables whatever effectors came before it. In this example here, we have a random effector moving around these primitives. If we add the re-effector, it will disable the random effector completely. But we can set up an area of influence for it, and as a result, we can disable the random effector only in a small part of our setup. Things become interesting if we dig deeper on the re-effector settings. For example, we can disable only the scale, or the position, or the rotation. And we can also animate these values. You see how powerful this can get. It gives us great flexibility and options. Since we can stack other effectors, we can add other effects specifically to the re-effector part. Yet again, expect to waste insane amounts of hours playing with this one. But this is not the only thing available for MoGraph. For example, we now have the possibility to scale clones based on the polygon size. We also have another uh, new effector, which is called Push Apart Effector. It does something that was often requested by a lot of people. It's moving clones apart in order to avoid intersections. It can do it in several different ways. Either by hiding them, pushing them apart from all axes, or from specific ones. Or just by scaling them apart. Uh, here's one example I've been playing with. It's using just a random effector and the push apart effector to scale things apart. And here's how it looks in its rendered form. <laughs> Another great new addition in MoGraph is the Weight Painting tool, which allows us to interactively paint our weight maps, and then use effectors to control those parts. Finally, we have the Honeycomb distribution, which is great for producing all sorts of patterns. All we need to do is drag the object that we will use as a pattern, and the rest is just adjusting the values. Now, on to some more cool things. Viewport. The viewport has gotten some nice new additions. Now we can get some uh, great previews for reflections and also ambient occlusion. Great for evaluating the form of your objects, but also as really quick previews for client approval. We also have a bunch of new shaders. The shadow catcher, for example, is one shader people were asking for ages. But we also have others like the thin film shader, great for bubble and oily surfaces. The one shader though I would like to highlight is the extra additions to the ambient occlusion shader. 
what we have here is a checkbox to enable inverse ambient occlusion. That allows us to create all sorts of weathering effects. By adjusting the settings, you can target the edges of the object. By stacking multiple layers of inverse AO, you can create exactly the weathering effect you need. Here's how the effect looks like in a rendered form. These are just a few of the new features available in R18. I've barely scratched the surface here. There are huge new features like new knife tools and object tracking. There's also support for substance materials, multi-editing of materials, uh, improvements to team render, external caches for MoGraph, uh, compact mode for the color chooser, uh, the parallax shader, uh, huge new additions to the con browser with great looking objects and materials, and uh, lots more. R18 is feature packed with lots and lots of features and improvements people will use daily. And that about wraps it up. Stay tuned for more C4D videos.